Good morning, y'all. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Jesus is alive. This morning, let's remember that he gave his all for us. So this morning, let's give our all to him. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I've tried too high It was my tomb Till I met you Cause when you call my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day you called my name And I ran out of that grave You called my name Into your glorious day Now your mercy has saved my soul Now your freedom is all that I know The old made new Jesus, when I met you Cause when you call my name I ran out of that way Out of the darkness into your glorious day You call my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Needed rescue, my sin was heavy. The chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the heaven I'm breathing. I have the future, my eyes are open.
Standing here in your presence In a grace so relentless I am one by perfect love Wrapped within the arms of heaven In a peace that lasts forever Sinking deep in mercy See, I'm wide awake Drawing closer by grace And all my heart is yours All fear removed Breathe you in, I lean into your love Oh, your My head, see your glory, Lord of all, so beautiful. Here in you, I find shelter, captivated by the splendor of your face. My secret place, I'm wide away, drawing closer by grace. Oh, my heart is yours. All fear removes. I bring you it, not in it.
to the cross today. We are all welcome to go to communion before him, to remember what he did for us on the, on the cross. He paid the price for all. So we encourage you today, get your elements out for communion. Get your bread. Get, get, get your juice with, in remembrance of the blood. And we're going to invite Pastor to come up. And, and we're going to take communion together. In Jesus' name. everyone welcome to our resurrection service we're happy to have you you know I do I have to admit this is still strange and it's still not the best way to do it but I'm so grateful that we have this opportunity to still celebrate together as a family and so we want to once again welcome you into our service today we love you and that's why we're here today we're working hard to make sure that we're communicating the love of God to you every single day and I know that you appreciate it we hear from you so let's take a moment and have our communion and uh, I hope you have your elements together. Today is Resurrection Sunday, and so we choose to celebrate Jesus. Now, if you're asking, why do we have communion in all of your services? It's because we believe that this is very important to us to overcome the virus and to overcome any form of sickness is that we take of our, into ourselves this love loaf and we drink unto ourselves this cup of love. So why don't you take a moment and reflect just for a moment of God's great love for you that he so loved you that he gave you Jesus. And in doing so, Jesus gave himself to you as a sacrifice. So, Father, we ask you to forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and we thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercies. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, guys, take a moment. Think about the lashes that fell on Jesus' back. And now, in that moment, receive your healing. You may eat. And likewise, we take the cup. And as we do, we celebrate the precious blood of Jesus. And we thank the Lord for his preservation today. And so in Jesus' name, we salute you, Lord. And we honor you with praise. You may drink. So guys, we want to take a moment to thank all of you for your financial support. If the Lord lays it on your heart today, and you see that you have the means to be a part of the financial stability of Thibodeau Family Church and our effort to help our community. Go online, go to ThibodeauFamilyChurch.com. There's a give button in the right corner of the screen. Click on it and uh, follow the prompts. You've been doing wonderful and we want to welcome all of you who are new to this uh, way of giving. Come on in and be a part of it. Thank you so much. Now today I want to talk to you about Resurrection Sunday and I'm going to title today's message Go. He's already there. And the reason we're going to go into this direction is because I want you to understand that after Jesus' resurrection, there were divine instructions given to the disciples to go where Jesus would be. And so I want you to know that today, no matter what you're faced with, what Jesus asks you to do that could be a little strange to you, like reaching out in a new way to someone that you love or a new way of distributing his kindness just go and do it because if he's asking you to do it that means he's already there in that practice so let's look at the scriptures today if you have your bibles take it out we're going to look at matthew chapter 28 we're going to read verses 1 through 8 it's really the the most i think from myself the 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 portion of scripture that i think highly relates to the resurrection of christ that i really like and so i want to read you this this text after the sabbath ended at the first light of dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went and took a look at the tomb. Suddenly the earth shook violently beneath their feet as the angel of the Lord, Jehovah, descended from heaven. Lightning flashed around him and his robe was dazzling white. The guards were stunned and terrified, lying motionless like dead men. Then the angel walked up to the tomb, rolled away the stone, and sat on top of it. The women were breathless and terrified until the angel said unto them, 
There's no reason to be afraid. I know you're here looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He's been risen victoriously, just as he said. Come inside the tomb and see the place where the Lord was lying. Then run and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead. And he says, I give you his message. I'm going ahead of you into Galilee, and I will see you there. They rushed quickly to tell the disciples, and listen to this, their hearts were in deep wonder and filled with great joy. So this day is a day where we have the opportunity to have our hearts filled with deep wonder as well as great joy because of the message of what happened on resurrection and what is the significance of resurrection to our life. So there are going to be three portions of this story that I want to look at and then we'll summarize it right at the end. First of all, we'll find this in Luke chapter 24, that the women who accompanied Jesus, those who kept company with him, were those, of course, who would witness the things firsthand. So these women who accompanied Jesus witnessed that the body of Jesus, without a doubt, was laid in a tomb. They confirmed his burial place. And out of love and compassion for the Lord, even in death, they went home. And they went home with a purpose. They went home to prepare spices to anoint the Lord's body after the Sabbath. So they made their way home. They prepared their spices. Then they made their way back to the tomb with the spices only to discover. Now I want you to take note of something. They witnessed the burial place of Jesus because they hung out with him all the time. They, they didn't lose sight of him. So they knew where he was buried out of love. And out of admiration and honor for him, they went home and they prepared spices to anoint his body. Upon coming back to the tomb because of this great love they had for the master, they discovered something. Now I want you to see the the, the point. They hung out with Jesus, so they witnessed. But they came into discovery because of their worship, because of their honor, because their hearts were in the right place. And here's what they discovered. The angel of the Lord rolled away the stone. They discovered the tomb was empty. They discovered that the body of Jesus was gone. Why was that important? Because the message is he has already gone ahead of them. So he wasn't there. He went before them. Not only did they witness all these things, but in this moment, they got visited by heaven. Two men in dazzling white garments showed up. In Luke chapter 24, though, we find that there's more of a challenge to these ladies than what you find here in Matthew chapter 28. And here's what the angel asked the the disciples, the women who were with them. Why would you be looking for the living one in the tomb? Now, listen to this question. Why are you looking for the living one in the tomb? Because you see, they should have known. They should have known that he wasn't going to be there. He had prepared them. But they didn't hear it. They couldn't comprehend it at that moment. And so the angel then asks them this question. Have you forgotten what he has said to you? What did he say to them? What did he instruct them? Well, he told them that the Son of Man was destined to be handed over to sinful men and to be nailed to the cross. But on the third day, that he would rise again. Now, here's something that's really I think enlightening, should be enlightening to all of us, is that heaven knew what Jesus said. The angels knew what Jesus had taught his disciples. That's why the angels could ask them, have you forgotten what he has taught you? But they had. And here's the reason for it, is that when you're more focused on the death or terrified of the death, you can never hear of the rising. They never heard of the resurrection. Nor did they believe that the resurrection was for that moment. They didn't think that resurrection was for now. They thought it was coming in the day of resurrection. And so here's the point. When they remembered the message that Jesus had given them in the totality of the message, that he would suffer, die, and then be raised, here's the cool point. They left the tomb. There was no reason for them to be there anymore. They didn't need the spices. They didn't need the ointment. They didn't need any of it because their praise now for sure had led them to this great discovery that what he had told them was true. So here's the beautiful thing 
that I believe resurrection means in this portion of the scripture is that Jesus opened the door for his father and his God to be our father and our God. Then the second point was now Jesus is walking to Emmaus with two of his disciples. He shows up and I believe Jesus prompted them into conversation. He wanted to know what was going on and what were they thinking. So Jesus walks up to them, joins them in this journey. And here's the beautiful thing about this whole, this whole task is that Jesus was with them unknown. Now listen to this. Jesus is with you. And in many cases, you never are aware of it, but he's with you. But he will manifest himself when he desires to, because that's exactly what happened here. And so here's what they ultimately, I believe, was at the heart of their, their existence. And it spilled out over into their conversation that, they, that Jesus, I think, does address. And here's what they said. We hoped that Jesus was the one who would redeem us and save us or rescue us as a people. Now, he, they were speaking of Israel. They were looking for the redemption and the salvation of Israel. What they were failing to realize was that Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection was for all. But they were looking, and they couldn't figure out, because they were still focusing on the death issue, how they had missed it. Their hope was that Jesus was the one. But then they came back with this, this report, this witness that these women had given them earlier. There were two angels that showed up to these women and told them that Jesus is now alive. And so Jesus then turns to his disciples and say, why do you find this so hard to believe? Well, what a question, because they were struggling. You see, they were so focused on their disappointment that they could never focus in on the resurrection, on the outcome. They never saw it because of the great disappointment. So here's what Jesus did. He ministered in their ear the secrets that came from the heart of God from the word. And he started in Genesis and brought them all the way through Malachi. And he taught them of himself. And he asked them this question. Wasn't it necessary for Christ to experience all these sufferings? And then afterward, now here's the point, enter into his glory. You see, the fruit of resurrection is that Jesus entered into his glory, which now enabled him to redeem and save not only Israel, but all of us. There's this beautiful story that's taking place here and it's developing. So here's what happens now. As they come to the end of their journey, Jesus appears to be walking ahead of them. But that's what he does. He goes ahead of us. Remember, the text, the title, the, the message today is go, be a witness because he's already there. He's already in your witness. He's already before you. He's already in the next place. He's gone to Galilee for you to meet him. But he seems to be walking ahead of them as if he's gone on this journey to a distant place. And here's something beautiful that happens. The disciples didn't want him to leave, so they offered him hospitality. And here's the beautiful thing. He accepted it. Do you know that today, if you'll open up the doors of your heart in hospitality to the Lord, Jesus will come and he'll dine with you. And at the end of that meeting, when Jesus disappeared out of their midst after revealing himself to them, they told one another, the same story happened to both of them. He says, our hearts burned with flames of holy passion. And they both agreed that it did. When he opened up the scriptures, when he opened up the word and he taught how God loves us, my heart burned with passion because he unveiled the profound mysteries of the scriptures. You see, this is what happens. This is the fruit of resurrection. It's available to all men who will come and have Christ be a part of their life. Jesus opens up the beauty and the wonder that's in the word of God so that we can go deeper into him. So I want to make this point to you. Jesus is meant to be an inward discovery, a delightful unveiling within the heart of man. That's the destiny of a relationship with Jesus. So here's the witness of these two disciples at the end of their journey with Jesus. It's true. 
Jesus has risen from the dead. And you know what they did? They ran off to tell the disciples. Now they had a witness. They had come into contact with the living Christ. 1 Peter 1 verse 3 says this, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. See that term, born again, into a living, energetic hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This is a part of the fruit that comes out of this day's celebration. Jesus' resurrection gives you and I access to living, energetic hope. So finally now, you have all the witnesses who have gathered together to testify to the disciples that Jesus really is alive. So you know what Jesus does? To confirm all their witnesses, he shows up and he reveals himself to all. And in that moment, the scripture says, he unlocked their understanding to receive revelation, to receive the fruit of resurrection. In other words, they were strangled. They were entangled in their minds. They couldn't get their minds wrapped around this resurrection message. But Jesus freed them so they could focus. They could see. They could become sharp in their focus of the whole plan of God. So Jesus demonstrated for them in that moment. He says, look, come see. Touch my hands. Look at the nail prints. Feel my side. Look at my feet. Give me something to eat. I want you to see the reality of resurrection. That now I have a body that's fitted for higher reaches. So in other words, Jesus is saying resurrection provided him now with a body to live on a higher realm. Well, you and I are a part of the body of Christ and resurrection has now given us this ability that we are now fitted for a higher way of living. Hallelujah. Come on. We are the hope, the energetic hope that our generation and generations to come need. This is why we celebrate resurrection. Here's the simple truth. You know this, I know this, many of us are planting seeds in our gardens right now. But if you put a seed into the ground, that seed will die. But it will come up again. And when it comes up, it does not come up looking like what you planted. That's the beauty. When we die in Christ and come up, we come up looking splendid in Christ Jesus. So in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 42 through verse 45, the scripture reads... So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, but it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, but it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, but it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, but there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first Adam was made a living soul, and the last Adam, Adam was made, was made through his life, his suffering, his death. He was made a quickening spirit. And you and I are sons and daughters of the last Adam. So that means you and I live by and now we are able to distribute this quickening, life-giving spirit. So Jesus the Messiah was destined to suffer, but he was also destined destined to be raised from the dead so that we could live out of a new existence. So here's how he completes the manifestation of his resurrection. He gives the disciples this mandate. Now you must go. You see, this is the fruit of resurrection. We're empowered by God to go. Why would we want to go? Because he's there. He's already there in the future where we must go. And he says, you travel with this message. It's the message of repentance that every man and woman is born to hear. There's a way for them to turn their life around. There's a way for them to receive forgiveness. That's the message. You preach repentance and forgiveness of sins so that men and women will turn their lives and face Jesus. That's the message. And you and I are equipped to do so 
because of this resurrection. Hallelujah. You are sons and daughters of this quickening, life-giving spirit. So let's go now to the summary of what does all this mean. You and I today are witnesses within our own life, through our own experiences. We have seen the fulfillment of the Father's promise. Jesus is alive. And therefore, we're ready. We, have, we should receive the power of the Holy Spirit that comes from heaven, that falls upon us, but also wraps us up in Jesus Christ. So we're wrapped now in the power of God. So now as the women of old prepared their spices, we come before Jesus in worship. We make new discoveries in the spirit and receive visitations from heaven. As the disciples had their, their minds untangled and refocused in life, we have that same opportunity. We have been fitted with a body that reaches higher realms of glory. We are prepared for the Father's promise of the Holy Spirit. And now we get to enter into the same glory that Jesus did. This is all because of resurrection. We qualify now to have the Father who did all of this for Jesus to do it for us. Now he's not only Jesus' Father and God, he's our Father and God. So we are reborn to experience this living, energetic hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And the result of resurrection is this. The Father's mission has been handed over to you. It was once Jesus' mission, but now it's ours. And you're equipped to do it. Glory to God. So guys, I want you to embrace this message. I want you to take it to heart that it's just not the celebration that Jesus rose from the dead. It's the celebration that now you are empowered by the resurrection of Jesus to live the same life that he lived because now you have the same Father and same God that he has. Let's pray together, please. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for this opportunity to share the word, to receive the word, and now to become the word. God, we ask you that in this Resurrection Sunday, you empower us at a whole nother level, a higher level, to be just like you in the earth. God, to demonstrate your glory and to provide this generation with a living energetic hope in jesus name amen now listen if you are tuning in today and you've never made jesus the lord of your life the message of repentance and forgiveness is for you right now you need to know that there's a place in jesus right now for you to turn around turn away from your sins and to receive all of the forgiveness that you have need of Remember, you're already forgiven because Jesus forgave you, but you have to receive that forgiveness and walk in a new relationship with the Lord. So how do we begin, Pastor? Well, I want you to make this confession of faith. I want you to say it, this out loud. Heavenly Father, I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. I believe he lived for me and died for me, and you raised him from, from the dead for me. And because he lives, I choose to live now. I desire to be one with you, so I receive that. I turn away from the old, I turn into the new, and now I'll bring you glory all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, that is the beginning of a great and glorious walk that you have with the Father. So I want you to embrace it. Now one of the cool ways that you're going to be able to maintain that is being in church, just like this. And then of course, when the doors open up again and we get back to social gatherings, not distancing, then I want you to come and gather here with the family of God and let's celebrate Jesus together because it is absolutely cool. Now guys, let's do this. Take your family's hands right now if you have somebody with you. And I want you to agree with them right now that this Resurrection Sunday will be a glorious day for them. I want you to speak the life of God over their week coming up in Jesus' name. Come on, we're going to remain intercessors for this generation. Come on, pray for the health care workers. Pray for families who have lost loved ones. Take a moment, pray for our, our community as a whole. Now, Father, in Jesus' name, as we all stand in faith, we thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercies expressed to our people. We bind the spirit of infirmity, the forces of death and destruction that have come into our land. 
We rebuke you in Jesus' name and release the glory of God. We lift up holy hands in thanksgiving and we praise you, Father God, for a new day and a new hour in our land. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's take a moment and pray for all of our leaders, our health care providers. They're on the front lines. Let's pray the wisdom of God and the protection of God over them. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for our president, his administration the Senate, the House. We thank you, Father God, from the federal to the state level, our governor, our, our local officials, our leaders, our parish president, all those who represent us, we pray for them that they walk with your protection, your wisdom, your guidance to know how to move forward for the well-being of all people in this community. We pray for our doctors, our health care providers, every person affiliated with the saving of life in Jesus' name, divine protection over you and provision over your life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, guys, we love you. Thank you so much for being a part of our Resurrection Sunday celebration. And remember, you're an evangelist. You have the opportunity to get this word out, like this service, post it all over the place. Let's get this gospel to the whole world out of Lafouche Parish. In Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, love you. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.